Well, I spoke to Greg Linden about China's push into chip making. He co-authored a book about the global semiconductor industry and is a research associate at the Institute for Business Innovation at UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business. I asked him what China's chip industry is focusing on. 2014, the government said that it was going to release as much as $160 billion over 10 years to build, uh, well, to invest in the industry. They didn't specify exactly, but there's currently more than about a dozen uh, semiconductor factories that are under construction. Uh, each of those factories costs uh, billions, often uh, as much as, it can cost as much as $30 billion to build an advanced semiconductor factory. Um, the factories are called fabs, and now the government is saying, well, we may not be able to deliver on all the promises we uh, made in 2014, but we will continue forward and we'll shift more towards design, which I think is a very sensible change, because semiconductor design is a, a big discipline in itself, and that's where a lot of profits are. Qualcomm, for example, is a design-only firm. They do not own factories, and yet they're one of the largest semiconductor firms in the world. And it's not just the funding that we've seen China focus on. We've also seen that it's made semiconductor chips one of the 10 key sectors in its Made in China 2025 strategy, this strategy to really upgrade the entire economy when it comes to tech and its manufacturing sector. So just how integral is domestic chip development to China's economy, do you think, going forward? Well, I think China should and will have advanced semiconductor technology on hand. Uh, the question is how they should go about it. I think this is a case, uh, particularly with regard to the factories, the fabs, where more is less. And uh, analysts are predicting that a lot of the fabs will never actually get built and uh, operate. But even if enough of them are built, it's the uh, they're offering to build these factories at a level that would drive the world into global oversupply in some of the semiconductor markets, and that would crash the price, and that would make the factories uneconomical to continue investing in. China aims to have domestic companies supply 40% 40 40 of the chips oh. used in China. What's your take on that goal? <laughs> I think that goal is a bit overambitious, but uh, they may well get there eventually. The chip industry is definitely a global industry, and it's just a matter of China developing its design capabilities in order to fill the factories that would, pr that would meet that goal. Um, but I think that it's a, a longer-term goal, uh, 20 or 30 years out. I don't think it's going to happen as fast as 2025. We talked about some of the deals. Let's first start by looking at the Qualcomm deal. We've seen that China has either tried to merge or perhaps partner with some companies and has really come up against a lot of scrutiny. So how do you see the ongoing trade tensions between the US and China impacting not just China's chip growth, but perhaps innovation in this sector? Well, I think to some extent, the, the trade balance is a misleading number and China likes to talk about the $200 billion of chips that it imports, but of course a lot of those get re-exported. China has made this a, a matter of prestige, and I think they need to keep an eye on profits as well as prestige. And for the U.S., I think that they're sensible to respond when China, China's government is funding efforts to acquire firms. If private firms are trying to do mergers and acquisitions, that raises one set of issues about antitrust and competition. But when a, a company, or rather a country that has said that it wants to dominate the global semiconductor industry, sends a lot of money in through various uh, vehicles like uh, Tsinghua Unigroup, and says, we, we want to acquire your, uh, your star firms, I think that the U.S. has every right to say, whoa, you know, this is your government coming in to do this, and our government has something to say about this, because there are national security implications for semiconductor technology at the very high end. There is the issue, though, of private companies also getting swept up in some of this rhetoric that we're seeing against China. So what should private companies in China do as they're also trying to expand and innovate as well? Private companies are able to strike the kinds of deals that will advance their interests. Um, they're able to collaborate with the, the leading manufacturers around the world. 
And there are some limits on technology imports, and that's where China has to be able to develop its own technology to compete. And some of that will be done through returnees, for example, who've worked in companies. There's, they can't share proprietary information, but there's experience and public types of knowledge that uh, come out in scientific papers that are shared and will help China get to the frontier. They're currently about uh, four to six years behind the technology frontier in semiconductor manufacturing, but their design is actually first rate, and they have to have a lot of those uh, high-end chips fabricated offshore.